What's up guys, Barry Game here back with some more auto heroes and today we're gonna do a build guide for none other than Mystic Fairy Freya because well you see her constantly on the top players accounts uh, she has really good survivability skills for your team but mainly she's built for one thing and that is some absolutely insane boss damage. Uh, her, She's got a lot of cool things. She's got shields. She's got healing. She's got dodging. She's got poisoning. She's got buffing. She's got a little bit of everything, which is why you definitely want her on your account. Probably somewhere in the fourth to sixth build range in that area. Because especially if you're going for like Star Expedition that we just had that huge week of. If you're really trying to push that and help your guild, you need Mystic Fairy Freya. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Let's jump right into it. So let's jump in, talk about the hero, and then explain why she is so dang good. Well, we're going to look out at the maxed out Mystic Fairy Freya, starting with her passive skills. Star Seeding, uh, change the base attack to deal damage to three random enemies, additionally poisoning them with Mirage Pollen, dealing 560% attack for two rounds. Meanwhile, restore self HP. So the restore is pretty cool. The main thing we're going to take away from this is the Mirage Pollen. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, we of course increases the poison damage by 15% to all attack targets. That usually is not really that great. That's not the part that is super amazing about her. We'll talk about her next one, Veiling Branches. When an ally releases base attacks or active skills, increases their all damage reduction by 12 percent and attack by 12 percent for three rounds so that's why right there uh you're basically getting that stacking attack buff for two to three rounds on your big damage dealers which is really really big um also increases their precision by 10 percent so you can kind of take that into consideration when you're trying to build to get your max precision you want like 150 percent in combat uh you can kind of bump it down a little bit if you want and then this this one right here the noble sublimation is amazing for survivability when an ally releases base attacks or active skills grants them a shield equal to 200 percent of mystic fairy freya's attacks so you still want to build her very attack oriented because that'll mean a bigger shield and this gives a ton of survivability now her bread and butter, what she's truly used for, is for this biography we have here for Pistol of Stars. Passive, different layers of evolutionary factor have different effects. At one layer of it, increases all allies damage reduction by 40% and control immunity by 35. That's pretty cool. When it gets to two layers, it changes to increases all allies attack by 22% for three rounds. Afterward, grants all allies a shield equal to 2,600% of attack. Again, really cool survivability, but the big one comes from layers three. At the end of each round, increases the damage dealt by self to poison targets by 10%. Meanwhile, increases self attack by 12 and speed by 15. Now that doesn't sound great at all, honestly, because she's not a damage dealer. But what makes her really good are her sublimations. So this one right here, three layers of evolutionary factor. Of course, this one here grants 33% of this effect to all allies, meaning your big damage dealers, your Vulcans, your Lord of Fear Aspens, your Fairy Queen Vessas are now doing basically three to 4% additional damage against poison targets um it doesn't sound like a lot it adds up being a lot because you're also increasing attack speed you can get layers of it on everything it's really 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 awesome and then finally her active skill is deal 1600 percent attack damage to all enemies which grants self one layer again of that evolutionary factor that we just talked about for her last passive and inflicts mirage pollen on two random enemies without mirage pollen so it's smart it won't try to put it on someone that already has it additionally poisons enemies with mirage pollen once that's why this is important you need that mirage pollen out to poison them to then get that synergy with the last uh buff over here the pistol of stars uh, then on top of that, uh, removes two attribute buffs from the enemy. Well, meanwhile, there's a 66% chance to inflict Mirage Pollen on another random ally, ally enemy without Mirage Pollen whenever an ally releases a base attack or active. Uh, and if you want to know what the Mirage Pollen actually does here, basic attacks have or active skills released by heroes that have it, aka the enemies, have a 35% chance to be dodged. So you just completely miss it. Now this dodge doesn't work on bosses, so like Star Expedition, it doesn't work or anything like that. It's really just for the poison. Uh, then poisons all enemies dealing 400% of attack damage to them for two rounds when Mirage Pollen disappears. Mirage Pollen disappears when the hero with Mirage Pollen takes base attacks or active skills 
four times. Whew. So that's a lot to talk about. Really, the main reason why you want her is for this evolutionary factor in the end game. Before that, you do want Mirage Pollen for that 35% chance to dodge the enemy attacks, especially when you pair her with like the new hero that we have out, uh, Elena, the, the Transcendence, Phantom to Fire Elena. You can go for some crazy, crazy dodge numbers. Now, typically, the way we gear her is just a normal set of gear. You don't want to sacrifice too much attack. Um, typically, I like running like a speed attack or a speed HP stone. You can run like block attack as well if you're building her tankier. Usually, she's one that has to be flexible depending on where you put her in your lineup. Sometimes you want her really early on, like Star Expedition, so you're going to want to run like a speed stone. Other times, you're going to want her later in the combat, and uh, it really just depends. Same with Artifact. Very flexible. You're going to use like crowns, demon bells, all sorts of different things. Um... Just depends on what game mode you're in that's going to decide that out. Uh, the other thing is if you are going to go for a good copy up here to try to get like, I always like block on her, just give her a little more survivability. There's a lot of different options. You don't need control precision or any of that stuff for Mirage Pollen. It's just, it's a guaranteed type thing. You don't have to worry about it. Again, you're very flexible with how you build her in here. It just depends on if you're using her as a tenant or if you're using her as an actual support hero in the game mode. Typically, again, I run her super tanky with control immunity to damage reduction block, uh, control immunity, or even armor, depending on the game mode you're in. And again, you're going to want to prioritize getting this very last branch maxed out. That's going to be the super important one. Now, she does have two different skins here. Uh, one of them is a sixth anniversary skin. So that one's going to be a little tricky, but it has damage reduction attack speed. Perfect. Uh, the other one is a Halloween limited skin. So they're both festival skins. This one's more like control immunity, holy damage. I don't really like the stats on it. It looks cool. Like I'll definitely say it looks cool. This one's definitely better in my opinion. And lastly, we need to talk about her core. So at the beginning of the battle and at the end of every round, Mystic Fairy Freya grants pistol essence to one random ally without it. Now this is different than the one that we talked about up here that is the evolutionary factor and the Mirage Pollen. This is a completely different effect here. Uh, whenever an ally releases base attacks or active skills, there's a 20% chance to release that Pistol Essence, which grants Pistol Essence to one random ally without it. Pistol Essence also increases attack by 15% and speed by 15 for four rounds for allies granted with it. That's really, really good. Uh, it will disappear after being released for four times, upon which the owner will get a shield equal to 6% of their max HP. So it has survivability, it has speed, it has attack, it's very useful, and this is usually the core that is used in Star Expedition as well. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, she's definitely a must-have hero on your account. Hopefully it helps you guys decide when to build her and how to build her. See you guys next time.